Hi, my name is Alexei Lubomirsky, and today we are in New York City and we're going to talk to you about portfolios. When I first started off, we were led to believe that the bigger the portfolio, the more professional you looked. And these books were huge. This one that I carry around, this is probably like a medium-sized one. They were pretty big. So it was my first summer in New York City, and it was a hot New York summer. And I was doing the rounds of my portfolio, seeing any magazines that would see me, and any advertising clients that I could manage to get on the phone. So my portfolio was always so heavy that I would end up at these meetings super sweaty. So I always used to carry around a crisp blue shirt so I could change into before the meetings. So I'd always arrive in my meetings 10 minutes early. I'd go into the nearest deli around the corner and I'd go to the fridge and put a really cold bottle of water on my wrist to cool my whole body down. And once I was cool enough, after about three minutes, I would go and change my shirt. So then I would walk into the meeting and have my nice crispy shirt on looking fresh and clean. As I was just starting, I'd probably only got like 15 shoots under my belt, probably looking like cheap versions of already established photographers' work. I put in my portfolio as much as possible for the clients to see. I would put a studio shoot in there, I'd put a location shoot, I'd put a beauty shoot, I'd do some portraits in there. I would try and cast the net as wide as possible, so in order to try and get any job that was out there. So this was good and bad. On one hand, it was good because it could show that I could actually shoot. I was capable of putting together like a 10-page story. On the other hand, it wasn't that great because it didn't really show my particular voice. Um, it was more about me just showing that I was capable of taking a picture. But the problem was it was the same as every other starting photographer. Let's go. <laughs> but it was one creative director who gave me the best piece of insight. So I managed to secure myself some editorial clients and I managed to find myself enough advertising clients per month that would help me pay the rent, feed myself and survive. But there were, I couldn't break through to the next level and I couldn't figure out why. So at that time I was working on a, uh, a project, a personal project, mm -hmm. where I would create fake film stills. And I've been working on this project since my early 20s. I decided to print a small book of these images. And that day I picked it up and just stuffed it into the back of my portfolio. So you start to notice how each art director has their own ways of going through a uh, portfolio. Some have no qualms about galloping through a portfolio as fast as possible just to get you out of the room. Other ones will look at it a bit slower at a more polite pace. And they'll ask you one question about every third picture, just so it's not to seem too rude. So anyway, this particular creative director was looking through my book. At the end of it, he says, you know, I've always loved the work you do and I will keep you in mind if anything suitable comes up, which essentially meant like, thank you, goodbye. So as I was putting my very big portfolio back into my very big portfolio case, he noticed this book that I'd printed out for myself. And this was a book of my personal project. It was my personal film stills, made up film stills. So all of a sudden the atmosphere in the room changed. It was two creative people talking passionately about narrative in photography, about different lighting and what mood that sells and what emotion that tells. It was no longer this forced, awkward meeting of one person having to look at another person's portfolio. So to cut a long story short, one month later, I was shooting my very first fragrance campaign with that creative director, and he told me this. Alexi, I know that you're capable of taking a gorgeous picture, but so are hundreds of other photographers. But when I saw that small book of your personal project, I saw something that wasn't in your safe and predictable portfolio. I saw you and your personal and creative sensibility. So whenever somebody comes to me and asks me advice about portfolios, my biggest piece of advice is to have something personal at the back of your portfolio. This is where you show who you are as a person, as a creative person. It doesn't have to be anything, it doesn't have to have any boundaries. It can be completely free. It can be documentary pictures of a rock band. It can be portraits of your cat. It can be still lives of flowers and what you enjoy. You know, I mean, of course, in your book, you're going to have certain things that are 
that have restrictions. You know, you've got to show a pants, you've got to show a dress in its entirety. But what it will do is it will show the creative director something about your personality, something about where your creativity lies. So remember that art directors and creative directors are probably seeing thousands of portfolios every month. And the majority of them are gonna look pretty much the same. So how are you gonna set yourself apart? Good luck with your portfolios, good luck with your meeting, and uh, don't forget your crispy clean shirt. So yeah. Thou must prize thy portfolio.